Claire, what was your biggest takeaway from this experience? Ooh, uh, it's a loaded question. I know there's a Mr. lot of Kevin. things that you can say. So, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think the main thing is authenticity is key. Speaking your truth is key. Healing and community is key. Mm-hmm. Cameron, what is the way you've grown through this experience? The older and older I get, um, the more and more I learn about accountability. We all make mistakes. None of us are perfect. But learning and taking accountability is the most important. I grew in ways I didn't even know I needed to grow. I thought I had come so far in my just overall healing journey. And then don't ask for opportunities to grow if you're not ready for them. And I asked for those opportunities to grow, and I was given every single one. And uh, this, it was transformational for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My biggest strength and weakness is always trying to see the best in people. And I will never try to fall for the potential. And always remember what you see is what you get. Mm-hmm. Becky, in what way have you grown from this experience? I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I learned to not chase something that doesn't chase me. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I already knew that, but it's just to remember what I deserve and remember who I am and just hold true to that. I think the biggest takeaway for me, and it's being more mindful of what I might have considered the small and innocuous things, and that just because I may have thought that, oh, it was just something done in passing doesn't mean that it doesn't have a reverberating effect on someone. I think I could use that lesson as well. It's yours to take. <laughs> I mean, something that obviously was an issue between us was intimacy and recognizing the other's love language and trying to adapt to that. I wish I could have better adapted to that so I could have shown her and separated what was real and what wasn't. Mm-hmm. Well said. Um, Orion, um, what lessons did you learn? How to be more clear in the things I'm saying and to be uh, even more clear about the intention of what I'm saying. I've learned to trust myself, to trust my first instinct, and I will never miss out on love by giving love freely. I'm grateful. I sit here, I'm not angry, I'm not sad, I'm not resentful, I'm not remorseful. I'm just overwhelmingly happy with my life right now. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. You know, after 17 seasons, we have seen 69 couples get married as complete strangers. Now, the most successful, whether they stayed married or got divorced, have used this experience to practice working through conflict and into reconciliation. Now that we have talked things out, and I'm not gonna say we've 100% cleared the air, but we kinda cleared the air around some of the most heated arguments. I just wanna thank you all for being here because this was hard as thank hell. Thank you, thank This God. was tough. We went through laughs, cries, everything in between, and you're great. Whether y'all agreed or not, I wanted everybody to have a chance to say their piece, and then you can move on, and I want you all to move on. Thank you for being a part of this journey. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for your courage in marrying a complete stranger and living it out for all of us to see. We have had a chance to cover everything that we could talk about with the Denver season of Married at First Sight. 